All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Friends, no one can live by himself alone, and no normal person wants to. It is natural for us to wish the company of others and to join with them in a communion of spirit. Yet much of our trouble comes because of others, particularly if we are sensitive or easily hurt. Now two things must happen if our relationship with others is to be a, a happy one. We must live with them, enjoy them, and act with them, but without in any way seeking to control their actions. This isn't the easiest thing to do, particularly with our close friends. We so often think we know what is best for them, and no doubt, they think that they know what is best for us. But you may be certain that the one who has the largest number of friends is always the one who can work and play with them and at the same time let them alone. This is also so very true in the family life. For a family is made up of its individual members who must live in close relationship with each other and who must cooperate and work together while at the same time remaining individuals. It is a fortunate child who is born into a family that understands this and who gives the child as much freedom as possible while at the same time teaching him how to cooperate with others. The child who is overprotected often loses his self-confidence and when he gets to be an adult, he is liable to lack self-assurance. On the other hand, the child who feels neglected and unwanted and unloved is very likely to grow up with an unconscious feeling that everything and everyone is against him. He is liable to develop either an over-aggressive or an under-aggressive aggressive attitude toward life but the well-adjusted person is the one who has been permitted to be an individual, but who also has learned to cooperate with other people. It all probably started way back in the early family life, even as an infant. For it was here that we all became conditioned for the years ahead of us. Well, you and I cannot possibly be born again physically nor can we return to the days of our youth and relive our lives. But it is interesting to know that the psychologist often does seek to take his patient back in imagination to his infancy. And what the psychologist really is doing is to get the patient to tell him the whole story of his life and in telling it in a free manner and without any inhibitions Experiences which were happy, as well as the ones that were happy, are brought to the light of day, and the patient is supposed to see just what happened to him way back there in the past and why. And in reliving all these experiences, if the treatment is successful, he reenacts them in his imagination, makes the mental and the emotional adjustments that should have been made when he was an infant or a child or a growing boy or girl. But there is something ever even better than this that you and I can do, something that Jesus knew all about, and something that he referred to when he said, ye must be born again, you must be born of the Spirit. This is what Jesus called the new birth, and it means a new outlook on life, a new way of thinking. It means a new sense of our relationship to those around us, to ourselves, and to God. For instance, if we are sensitive and our feelings easily hurt, we can trace our origin back to its source, which is God, and we can realize that we live and move and have our being in pure spirit. We can know that there is nothing in us that either gives hurt or can receive it. If we feel this deeply enough, we shall automatically make the adjustments necessary to our mental, our emotional, 
and our physical well-being. But in order to do this, we must first have a firm conviction that all people live in God. We must have a deep realization that we are all one in this universal spirit which is God. You see, while there is a place where you and I begin and where we leave off physically, there isn't any place where we begin and leave off mentally or spiritually. Our minds merge with the minds of others, while some silent force within us attracts or repels, and all in accord with our accepted thought patterns. These thought patterns, of course, are built up out of our experience in living. If then we should find that we do not merge with others in unity and happiness and in joy, we may be certain that there is something inside us that feels the hurt of life, something that feels it has been rebuffed and cast out and isn't wanted. And here is where the adjustment has to be made, so far as you and I are concerned. And we should be certain that we ourselves are also adjusted to others. We should neither wish to dominate them, nor should we wish them to dominate us. We just want to get along with them happily. They may have opinions entirely different from ours, and we must be flexible enough to recognize that their opinions are necessary to them, even though you and I do not agree with them. When Jesus spoke of non-resistance, he didn't mean that we have to agree with every other person's opinion. Rather, he meant exactly what he said. He said, don't resist. Let it alone. Don't even try to dominate others. And if you don't resist, it will depart from you. It won't bother you. If you can get over this idea, and if we could all get over the idea of trying to control other people's thoughts and actions and still live with them in happy relationships, if we can do this, we shall be well on the road to our own adjustment. And above everything else, if we can trace our life back to its original source, which is God, and know that nothing ever happened that can hurt us, if we know there is nothing in us that could hurt anyone else, or that even wants to, and if we really feel this and act as though it were true, we shall find that we are getting along with others. One of the things that interests me so much in our new understanding of how it is that the mind works is the great simplicity with which Jesus approached this subject. You see, human nature was just the same then as it is today. People had the same wants, they had the same needs, they had the same ambitions and suffered the same defeats. Human nature hasn't changed a bit, but we are beginning to understand it better. Jesus taught us how to make all the psychological adjustments that are necessary. And he did this by a very simple method. A method so simple it doesn't seem quite possible that it could be so effective. It is as simple as this. It is as though Jesus had been saying to us, now you have been standing in your own shadow. And if you really want sunshine, why don't you step out into the sunshine? You have locked yourself away in a dark closet. Why don't you come out into the light? You have been feeling that everything is against you and no one cares for you. Don't you know that God is in everyone? Why don't you meet the God in others? See what happens. It is as though Jesus were saying to us, you think that you were born of flesh and blood. You think that your parents really gave you life. You think that everything that has happened to you since you were born is held against you. You think that all the negative thoughts you ever have had are operating against you. You think that all the fears and failures and doubts and uncertainties you have been carrying around for years are something over which you have no control. Why don't you try something else? I have a method that will work for you if you will let it. Just learn to forget the past. 
Forgive yourself and forgive everyone for everything that may ever have happened. Try to feel that everyone probably is doing about the best he can. Come to realize that while you were born into this world through your parents, you really are a spirit. You really are born of life itself. And the thing that entered into you when you were born was God, the living spirit. Why not get back to the true center of your being and think and act and live as though you were one with everything and every one because you are one with God. Jesus gave us a secret for adjustment. And he gave us his secret when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Go right back in your own thought, in your own, ima own imagination to this central idea. I am one with God. All people are one with God. All people live in God. When I meet others, it is God in them that I meet. God individualized. God as my friend. Jesus never denied that people are unhappy or badly adjusted to life. What he said was, you don't have to remain that way. Seek first the kingdom of God, seek first things first, and everything else will be added. And by first things, Jesus meant find God in yourself. That is why he spent so much time alone. And he said, persist until you do find him. This is why he said also, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And he said, Keep right on knocking at the door of your mind. Knock and it shall be opened. Keep right on seeking and you will find. Jesus not only told us what it is we need if we want to be properly adjusted to life and to others, he told us where it is and how to find it. For Jesus knew, as we all must realize, that our adjustments must be made inside ourselves. If then we have been seeing everything as though we were looking through dark glasses, let's take them off. If people have looked drab or uninteresting to us, it is because that is the way we are looking at them. If we haven't received joy from others, it is because we have stifled a joy that ought to be and really is at the very center of our own being. Joy in us must go forth to meet joy. Love must go forth to meet love. And so we want to get along with others because we want to be happy. Have we first learned to get along with ourselves? Or are we continually disturbed by our own thoughts, our own likes, our dislikes? And if we happen to like a few people, are we trying to dominate them? Or are we living them free to enjoy the association of our spirit with theirs, really minding our own business. Can we really love them and let them alone? Now here is the secret. We can if we let the spirit in us meet the spirit in them. We can when we know that there is one spirit in which we all live and move and have our being. But I don't think that I have, a, I have ever met a person or I don't think that I feel that we all have to worship God or think of God in exactly the same way or commune with God in the same way because each of us is an individual. And I have never yet met one single person in my experience whom I feel to be radiantly permanently and happily adjusted to people, to find life and to living, who did not have faith. And I never expect to. My experience has taught me that no such a person lives. We all are rooted in God. And it is only as we get right down to the roots of our being that we can possibly unify with others in spirit and in truth. 
Here is a letter from one of our listeners, which reads as follows. It says, I am so appreciative of the home study course that you have been sending me, and I never miss your Sunday broadcasts if possible. Since I have been hearing them, many of the dark clouds of ill health and family disturbance are clearing up. I know that with your continued prayers for me and my family, we shall, with continued faith, love, and trust, make a wonderful demonstration. May God continue to bless your great work. Well, friends, this power for good can work for you, just as it's working for this other listener. And again, I would like to remind you how very happy we are to send you our lessons. These lessons will help you better to understand our talks because they give you definite directions for using that power that is within you. And just as this writer did, I know that you are going to sit down and write us a letter, sending us your blessing. I know that you will hear, that we shall hear from you about the adjustments that you are making in your life. And won't you please tell your friends about this program? Let's all work together to see how many people we can help to a happier and a fuller life. Remember, this radio program is yours. Your faith in the great spiritual consciousness we are creating together sustains our radio ministry of the air, makes it possible for us to bring our message to more people every week. Now as we join together in a moment of meditation, let us all realize that we are one with God, one with each other, and one with life. Let us know that whatever our problem, whether it be one of health or finance or family difficulties, that this power can and will work through us right now to bless and to heal. Let us take as the thought for our meditation these words from the prayer of Jesus, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, as each quietly says to himself, because I am one with God, I am one with all people, because I am one with life, I am one with everything that lives. I feel my union with people and with nature. I feel that I belong to life. I love life, and I enter into the joy of living. I enter into companionship with others, into cooperation with them. And I know that something within me reaches out and embraces the whole world. Something within me blesses everything it touches and brings life and happiness and joy to everyone. Something in me acts as a healing balm, restoring everything to its natural and its native perfection. As I silently listen to the spirit within me, I am born again born into joy and hope and gladness, born into love and faith and assurance. Silently, I release every negative thought from my mind. I loose it and let it go. And I too pray that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. <laughs> 